Good morning guys! We are now starting to discuss Module 6 of Basic Industry Standard. After the completion of the module, a student will be able to first identify the types of information sources, construct a basic and viable computation on the basic industry standard that will be used to assess the secondary data, and number three, to apply the process of communication approach in data collection. The four basic industry standards are first, liquidity ratio, number two, stability ratio, number three, profitability ratio, and number four, leverage ratio. Liquidity ratio measures a company's ability to pay debt obligation and its margin of safety to without raising capital. Liquidity ratio are used for, for prospective creditors and lenders to decide whether to extend credit or debt, respectively, to companies. There are two liquidity ratios, and they are the following. The first one is the working capital ratio, and the second one is the acid test ratio. Working capital ratio are also known as current asset ratio. Your business is liquid when you have immediate cash flow that can be used on your business. The formula is working capital ratio is equals to current asset divided by current liability. Whatever the result is, the result should be at least 1.2 or more to make it more credible to have an immediate cash for the operation. Next type of liquidity ratio is the acid test ratio. Your business is liquid when you have immediate cash flow that can be used on your business. The formula is acid test ratio is equals to cash, add the accounts receivable, add the marketable securities, divided by the current liabilities. The result should be at least 1.2 or more to make it more credible to have an immediate cash flow for the operation. It is more reliable than working capital ratio. Then we have the stability ratio. Stability ratio is a long-term counterpart of liquidity. It is the rotation of deadlines of companies' customer credits. Here, you may know if how much time the business can collect the receivables. It is also called as activity ratio. Stability ratio are the following. First one, we have the average daily sales. We have the average collection period. We have the fixed asset turnover. We have the inventory turnover and the total asset turnover. So let's start with the formula of average daily sales. The formula is average daily sales is equal to sales divided by 365 days. It tells how much projected sales you have a day for a cycle of one year. Next, we have the average collection period. The formula is average collection period is equal to accounts receivable divided by average daily sales. It determines how many months you collect the said amount. Next is the fixed asset turnover. The formula is fixed asset turnover is equal to sales divided by fixed asset. It determines the number of times your sales can purchase your fixed asset. Next is the inventory turnover. The formula is inventory turnover is equal to cost of goods sold divided by inventory. It determines how many times the goods you have or in the warehouse can be sold. The last part of stability ratio is the total asset turnover. The formula is total asset turnover is equal to sales divided by total asset. It determines how many times your sales over your total asset. Profitability ratio. Profitability ratio are asset measurements used to determine the ability of a business to create wealth. It is also involved more to determine the company's bottom line and its return to investor. Profitability ratio are the following. First is we have the gross profit margin ratio, the operating margin ratio, the return on sales, the return on asset, and the return on equity. Let's start with the formula of gross profit margin ratio. The formula is gross profit margin ratio is equal to gross profit divided by sales. The result should be at least 30% or more. Operating margin ratio formula is operating profit margin ratio is equal to operating profit divided by sales. The result should be at least 25% or more. Return on sales formula is return on sales is equal to net profit over sales. The result should be at least 15% or more. Next is the return on asset formula. The formula is ROA or return on asset is equals to net profit divided by asset. 
it determines how many percentage of net income over total asset. Remember, the result should be at least with positive percentage. Next formula is the ROE or the return on equity. The formula is return on equity is equal to net profit over capital. It determines the percentage or share of income against the ending capital. It doesn't matter how many percentage as, as long as it has a positive percentage. It assumes that having a 15% share in capital or more means a profitable business. Next is we have the solvency ratio. Solvency ratio is the proportion of debt that the bank has compared to its equity capital. It is meant to evaluate a company's debt level. It is also called as debt ratio, solvency ratio, or the leverage ratio. Let's start with the debt ratio. The formula is, debt ratio is equal to total liabilities over total asset. The result should be at least 40% or less on the total asset. Long-term debt ratio. Long-term debt ratio formula is, Long-term debt ratio is equals to long-term debt over total asset. The result should be at least 40% or less on the total asset. Total debt over stockholders' equity formula is total liabilities divided by stockholders' equity. The result should have at least 50% on the ending stockholders' equity. Next is we have the total debt over sales. The formula is total liabilities divided by total sales. In order to control the cash needed for the operation, business should have at least minimal liabilities on the total sales. Guys, we will prepare a set of discussion for the sample tools to be used as your secondary data. Again guys, this is the end of our presentation on Module 6, Basic Industry Standard.